Friends, it would be hard not to preach about puppies today. Let's face it, right? Of course, kittens are adorable too, but when we're out taking walks, we see more dogs than cats. And when we're out driving and we see dogs out the car windows, my husband Jim, who doesn't really want a pet, comments on all of them. Look at that one. Why? You know, all of you sitting here with your beloved pets or remembering a beloved pet from some period in your life or simply enjoying being here with other people's pets, you know. It's not primarily the cuteness factor, although that is off the charts. It's the love covered in fur part, love made physical and tangible, eyeball to eyeball, like Sid. Sid is my brother Joe's family rescue dog. I may have already told you about Sid, he's so remarkable, so pardon me if I'm bringing him up again, but honestly, he is not cute at all in any way. Do not doubt me on this. Every creature here today is a 10 to Sid's negative 10. <laughs> but my sister-in-law, Mary Beth, took one look at his pathetic, nippy, anxious, growling self in the rescue shelter and said, that's our dog. <laughs> and so from that sea of desperate cuteness, she plucked Sid to take home. My tough guy, Brother Joe, he talks to him in a baby voice, as one does with animals. He calls him Mr. How you doing, Mr.? <sighs> Although Sid is gangly and it's kind of icky to touch him because most of his body has no hair. Seriously. <laughs> the teenagers pick up Sid. He's about yay big. And they stroke him. Why? You know. It's the love covered in, a little bit at least, a fur thing. It's the love made physical and tangible and eyeball to eyeball. Well, that is the experience of St. Francis, looking at the whole world, all of creation, and every single person. He looks with that deep love. Why? It's clearly not because of our cuteness, because you know, Francis lived in a time when there was plenty of ugliness, and he had participated in some himself early in his life. It happens because of the way Jesus looked at St. Francis. The writer Friar Jack Wince wrote, when as a young man, Francis found himself in a fog of doubt as to the nature of God's care for him. He sought the face of God through prayer, and God opened Francis's eyes of faith. The saint saw a vision of Christ gazing at him from the cross with such a look of love that Francis's soul melted. Once Francis was touched by seeing the depth of Jesus' love for him, imperfect though Francis' life had been, Francis was forever changed, and he began to see the whole of creation through those loving eyes. Well, friends, we are touched by that depth of Jesus' love, too. Let it in. What if we could look at this world through eyes like that, eyes that loved enough that the person they looked at simply melted in the warmth of that gaze. We look at our dogs and cats like that. Why not other people? St. Francis, in the warmth of the divine's loving gaze, prayed that we bring that kind of love to all creation. And we resonate with that, right? Because it sounds lovely to say all creation. And surely, 
we do need to love and care for our earth and its inhabitants better than we have. But here's the thing. It's easy to love the bird song in the garden and the voices of the animals present here today and the sun reflecting off the water in the baylands and waterfalls in Yosemite and the rolling waves coastside. They take our breath away with their splendor, and they should. But all creation also means people, people we don't know very well and who don't look like us or live near us or worship like us or vote like us or agree with us at all. People we don't like, Jesus looks at with the same love that he looked at St. Francis with and melted his heart. St. Francis once wrote to his fellow friars, unlike the sun or wind or water, you and I have the capacity to choose to live in accord with our truest selves or ignore it, to praise God by our words and deeds or not, to recognize our place in the family of creation, or pretend that we are above and apart from it. And surely we know by now, more than ever in fact, that we are not apart from creation. We hold great responsibility to choose to be better stewards of this planet and to choose to better love our fellow human beings to love each other and our world into a healthy and harmonious place may seem more daunting than ever in the face of so much trauma and hate and violence and hard-heartedness in our society and in the world. But St. Francis said, start by doing what is necessary, then what is possible, and suddenly you're doing the impossible. Well, what is necessary is love. Our actions have to stem from love, not fluffy puppy love, serious love. The love Jesus teaches in the gospel that excludes no one, that we see lived out by Jesus in the gospel. We glom on to St. Francis in this season of creation because of his love of all God's creation but his real legacy was making a radical change in his own life to embrace love in a radical way. St. Clair joined St. Francis in this draw of Jesus' love, and she established her order of sisters vowing to extreme poverty because loving Jesus, following Jesus to her, required nothing else. And I will add, the Pope wasn't thrilled about the extreme poverty thing, and she had to fight with him to get that to be the rule of her religious order. Now, we know that love is the way of following Jesus, and it is possible to love other people because we do it all the time. Look at the person next to you. You're doing it right now. And now is when we must really dig in and start doing the seemingly impossible and love all people, even the ones we disagree with. It's time we melt our hearts. May we truly, truly see how much God loves us and be changed and be moved to love each other that way. Love made physical, and tangible and eyeball to eyeball, it can melt hearts and it can change the world. That's what Jesus did. Now it's our turn.